Okay friends, it's time to get started on replacing our inside door lock actuator. To do this, we're going to have to take off the door panel. To start taking the door panel off, we're going to make our way right over to the mirror switch. To remove the mirror switch, I'm going to use a plastic trim tool so I don't damage the paneling here. You can also carefully use a pocket screwdriver if you can't get in between the two areas. Now as I press down in the center here, there's going to be a tab located behind this area holding it in. So I'm just going to carefully press it down towards the switch and gently twist. While I start pulling it away, there's also another tab on this side closer to the window. Now for this one, generally all I do is I carefully put my finger in here and then I'll run mine down along the side. As I start putting my trim tool in along the side here, I'm pressing on that tab and I can carefully pull this out and away from the door panel. Now once you pull it out of there, you're going to want to have a look at the back side. You're going to find that you have a wiring harness that leads to the switch. On one side, you're going to have a locking tab. To remove that, you can either use your trim tool or that small pocket screwdriver. I'll carefully get in between the wiring harness and the switch itself, gently pry just far enough to pull it out. Now once I have it out of there, I always like to give electrical components a quick inspection. If you see any funny colors inside where the connector is, Generally, that's corrosion, and it would need to be dealt with. Ours looks fine, so I'll go ahead and set this aside. I'll carefully push this inside the door panel, and now we can move along to where the window switches are located. To remove the window switch, I'm going to carefully get underneath this area right here with my plastic trim tool. I can feel that there's a little ridge that I can carefully get in between. I'm going to gently pry and start pulling this up a little bit as I do. Let's have a look from the back side. Now on the back side, you can see that you have three electrical connectors. We're going to start disconnecting these. For the green, you can see that there's a tab right here along this area. I'm going to use my pocket screwdriver and I'm going to carefully try pressing on this. You can also try to use your fingers or even some pliers if for some reason your fingers aren't strong enough. Always give it that close inspection. Looks fine. We'll continue on to the blue in the center here. There's a tab right along the side. We'll go ahead and press on that and gently pull this out as well. This one's a little bit harder to get to. It's down along the side right here. I'm just going to carefully get in between here. Gently pry, lift it up and out. Okay, now I have everything disconnected. I'll have a look at the back side of my switch to make sure it looks fine and set it aside. Now let's move along to this area. Behind your black handle, you're going to find a rectangular panel. I'm going to carefully use a pocket screwdriver, get in between this area without damaging anything and gently pry. We'll go ahead and pull it right off of there and you can have a look at the back side. There's going to be four locking tabs that hold it in place. Make sure they're still good and set that aside. Now behind that panel, you're going to find that you have two 7mm headed bolts. We're going to remove the pair. There's one of our screws. Do the same to the other. Now that we have those two screws off, let's move along to this area. This is the inside door handle. We want to carefully remove the trim panel that goes behind the handle. I'll use my pocket screwdriver, gently get in between this area without damaging the door panel in any way. I'm going to gently pry as I make my way around until it pops free. Once you have it broken free, go ahead and pull on that handle and remove this from the door panel. We'll give it a quick inspection and set it aside. Now let's move down along the bottom of the door panel. You're going to find two five and a half millimeter mounting screws.
Now we can move along to removing the door panel from the door. To do this, I'm going to use a plastic trim tool. And essentially, I want to get in between the panel and the door itself and gently start prying it away. Now behind the door panel, you're going to have several clips that look like this. It's common for them to pop out of place, and that's okay, because once we have it apart, we can carefully put them all back into place. Now once you have it mostly broken free, we're going to carefully grab onto the door panel and we're going to gently lift it up. Just be very careful for any pinch points. I don't want you to hurt your fingers in any way. There's our door panel. Go ahead and set that aside. All right, with the door panel out of the way, we have a nice clear view of our inside door handle. We're going to carefully start removing some of the insulation that's located around it. Now what I want to do is I'm going to make my way down along here and there's going to be some sticky tape that I'm going to carefully start pulling away. I want to reuse it so I don't want to tear it into a whole bunch of pieces. Now once I have that pulled away, I'm going to continue on to the foam insulator. Now behind all that, you're going to find that you have two Phillips head screws. There's one down in the lower corner and one directly diagonal across from it. Let's remove the pair. Let's grab onto that door handle. We're going to give it a little wiggle and start separating it from the door itself. Now, as we start pulling this away from the door, keep in mind that you will have a rod that leads to the back of this that we will have to disconnect. So, of course, it won't just fall right out of there. You want to pay attention to the way that the rod comes up, curves two ways here. All we want to do is gently pull the handle away far enough that we can take this and gently twist the handle as needed to remove it. There it is, friends. With that out of the way, let's continue on to removing the inside vapor barrier. That's this area right here. As we start removing this, you want to be very careful not to tear it because we will be reusing it. Now let's move along to this area right down here. You're going to find that you have an 11 millimeter headed bolt that holds the window channel that runs down along here in place. Let's remove this bolt. Now I can reach inside and I can move the window channel around a little bit so I can gain access to where I need to work. Now that we have that broken free, let's continue on with a trim tool. Now I'm going to use this trim tool and essentially all I want to do is try to break this wiring free from the window channel. So I'll just carefully get in between this area and gently start prying. I don't want to damage the wiring in any way. Now that we have that separated, I'll reach inside and I'm going to grab onto that window channel. I'm going to give it a little wiggle and I'm going to try to pull it down. Now we can remove this from the area so we can gain access to our latch. Now let's move back to that wiring. We're going to look at where it connects onto the latch assembly. Up along the top area, you're going to find that there's one locking tab. I want to carefully get in between there with a small screwdriver. Gently pry that tab and remove the wiring. We'll give that wire a quick inspection and then set that aside. Now we're going to start disconnecting some rods from the area. We have one that comes from the outside door handle down to the latch. It's held in place with this yellow plastic connector. 
Now for this, I'm just gonna use a small pick and I wanna come along this area here. There's gonna be a little tab that you can grab onto and gently pop it out of the way. As you can tell, it just became unlatched. Now I can go ahead and grab onto that rod and we'll pull it out of its place. We'll go ahead and set that aside. Now with that set aside, let's move along to our lock rod here. This is the rod that leads all the way up to your lock cylinder. Now you could either remove the entire lock cylinder from the area by removing this, or even easier than that, if you were to look at this area along the back side of the lock cylinder, you're gonna find that you have a little C clamp. Now all I wanna do is use my pick or even a small screwdriver. I'm gonna carefully get in between here and I'm gonna gently start pulling this out of its locked position. When you do this, you wanna be very careful not to lose it. It's very small and it could potentially come flying out and get stuck in the door or even on the ground. To help ensure that I don't lose it, I'm gonna have a magnet handy. I'll have my magnet close to the area. I'll start pulling this down and out of position. That's what our clip looks like right there. Just give it a close inspection. Make sure it's not rotted or damaged in any way. Ours looks fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. Now I'll reach up inside the door and I'm gonna remove the lever from the back side of the lock assembly. Now that we have all that out of the way, we can continue on with the wiring. You can tell there's one more wire that goes up to the top of the latch. We're just gonna go ahead and carefully grab onto that, give it a wiggle, and remove it from the latch assembly. We'll give that a close inspection real quick. That looks fine. Now we can set the wiring aside in a place that we won't forget it. Now let's move along to the outside area of the door where the latch connects onto it. You're gonna find three Phillips head screws. Now you can typically use a Phillips head screwdriver to go ahead and remove these, but sometimes they are stuck in position. If that's the case, you want to go ahead and use a driver of some sort just to break it free. Now I'll go ahead and start removing these. For the last one, I'm gonna leave it in there a little bit. Now the next thing we're gonna to have to do is move along to this area right here. You're gonna find that you have a metallic rivet that holds the inside door lock actuator to the door itself. You can either drill this out or even just cut it off. I'm gonna use a cutting wheel and I'm gonna to try to be as careful as possible not to damage my door. Now I'll use my air chisel, remove the rest. Now I'm gonna continue on with my trim tool. I wanna to come right down here to the door lock actuator. We can see that there's some wiring that's connected to it. I'll carefully pry that off of the actuator and then we're also gonna disconnect it down along the bottom. Let's go ahead and pop this right off of here. Now I can pull the actuator away a little bit and I'm gonna to try to find a little squeeze tab on it. The area right where my thumb is, is a squeeze tab. It's small and rectangular. Squeeze on that, carefully remove it. Give it a quick inspection. You can go ahead and set that wiring aside. Now I'm gonna reach up here, holding onto my latch. We're gonna carefully start twisting this to remove it. 
as we pull it out, you have to keep in mind there are still a couple rods that are still attached. So we're gonna have to carefully start pulling this out and twisting it to remove each rod individually. Come right down here to the actuator. We'll give this a little twist so we can pull the hook out of it. There's that. Now I'm gonna carefully start pulling down on the latch. I'm trying to bring the door lock down and out through the door. There we are. Now as we start bringing this around, there's gonna be one more rod that leads all the way to that inside door handle area. We've already removed it from the inside door handle, so we just need to be careful as we remove the entire unit while we continue. There's that. Now before I go ahead and pull out each of these two rods off of our original latch, let's go ahead and grab onto the new latch, match it up, and then install each of the rods one by one as we continue. All right, so we've got both of our latches on the bench. As you can tell, the parts match up perfectly in exception of a couple pieces here that we're gonna have to transfer to the new. Now with that said, let's start removing our rods. We have the lock rod here. That comes down to this area. I'm just gonna carefully grab onto it. I'll spin it a little bit so you can have a look. We've got the hooked area here. You just want to kind of spin it and twist it until it feels as though it wants to slide right on out of there. Now before I go too far with this, I'm just going to go ahead and take it and put it directly into the brand new latch. Now we're going to continue on to the other rod. I'll twist it. Once again, before I put it down and mix it up in any way, I'm just going to transfer it right on over. Now there's only one other thing on this that we're going to have to transfer, and that's this area right here. Looking along the back side of it, you can see that there's two little plastic tabs that you need to squeeze, and then you can carefully pull this right off of here. To do this, I'll use some long nose pliers, give them a gentle squeeze, and pull this out of its bracket. Transfer it directly over to the brand new latch. Click it in. Give it a wiggle to make sure it's completely secure. If it's not secure, you have to go ahead and replace this piece. Now before I go ahead and put this back inside the door, I'm just going to go ahead and lift this up. Yours might not have come into the lock position, but I like to have it open. It's much easier at this point than when it's in the door. Now that we have these two rods on, we have one more rod. Now for us, this one had come off while I was trying to remove the latch assembly from the door. When you put it in, you want to make sure you put it in the proper position. Now looking at this, I can see that it has a couple extra bends on it, so I just want to make sure that I put it in here and twist it properly along the way. There we are. Now we can get this back inside the door. Let's carefully start putting this into the proper position. Now I'm just sliding the door handle rod as far in as I can so I can take the rest of this latch and I'll be able to put the lock rod into its proper position inside the door as well. We are, we're getting a little close here. The hardest part's just pretty much getting all the rods to line up and remain in the proper position as you're doing this. I can see my lock rod coming up through the proper hole. Now I'll make my way out here. I'm going to continue on by putting in two of my mounting bolts. I'm going to leave them nice and loose. I want to be able to wiggle this around but I want it to kind of hold in place while I can continue inside the door.
Back over on the bench, we're going to continue on with our door lock actuator. Now, when we went to remove this from the door, you notice that I had to cut the rivet. Part of the rivet is still inside of the door lock actuator. We need to make sure we get it out of there so we can go ahead and either replace it with a new rivet or even a nut and bolt, whichever way you want to do it. Either way, this needs to come out. Let's get this in the door. All right, let's install our door lock actuator. Up along here, we have the hook for our rod. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this and I'll put it inside the door. Now I'm gonna take the hook for the rod and I'm gonna slide it through the inboard side right down along the bottom here. You can see the area that it needs to slide into. Let's go ahead and carefully start pressing it in and then I'll roll it down and into proper position. Now we can swing this down and we're gonna start lining up where the mounting bracket needs to connect onto the door. You can look down along here and you can see as I move it, I can line up the two holes. At this point, you can either continue on with a rivet or even a nut and bolt. Make sure that's nice and tight. I'll reach inside. I'm gonna give the actuator a little wiggle. I wanna make sure the bracket's tight to the door. You don't want it to vibrate loose while you're driving down the road. Let's continue on with our wiring for that actuator. For that, there's gonna be the electrical connector that connects in down along the bottom of the actuator. I'll line it up, slide it in, listen for a click. There's that click, now I'll give it a tug to make sure it's secure. Now, of course, we're also gonna re-secure the wiring into the bracket where it belongs. Give that a little wiggle as well. Now we can reach up inside here and we're going to start reconnecting the door lock rod. We're going to take this and we want to put the little bracket facing out and away from me here. It should line up with the little pitons inside there. Now as you can see it's sitting perfectly. I'm going to continue on with my little metallic clip here. When you do this you want to be very careful. It's spring loaded and essentially as you try pressing it on, it's going to be trying to either go on further or even try to shoot off. So just be very careful not to lose it or hurt yourself. I'll try squeezing this on with some long nose pliers. It'll give me a little bit of leverage. All right, so I heard a nice click coming from that. Now I'm gonna grab onto the rod and I wanna give it a wiggle. You wanna make sure it's completely secured to that door lock so when you try to lock your door, it's gonna work as it should. Now let's go ahead and grab onto that rod that leads up to our door handle. I'm gonna try to hold onto this and I wanna try to press it up. Once I press it up, I'm gonna also press it into place into the door latch. We'll listen for a nice click. I'm gonna lock it in. Give that little rod a nice tug. You want to make sure it's secured to the latch so it doesn't fall off. That feels good. Now we'll make our way back out here and we'll start in our third bolt for the latch. Go ahead and tighten it up. And if you're using an impact driver, go ahead and give it a loving bonk. Before we continue putting anything else back together, let's go ahead and test our latch. The safest way to test this is to use a Phillips head screwdriver or a rod of some sort. We want to come right inside the latch. Essentially, we're going to use the screwdriver as the striker that's on the body of the vehicle. Now, as I pull this towards me, it's going to think that the door's shut. So I'm going to try to press it away. Yeah, that's latch nice and tight. Now I'm gonna to try to hold pressure, forcing it in this direction while I pull on the outside door handle. As you can tell, it just unlocked for me. It would open the door and I could have gotten into the vehicle. I'll test it one more time. I'm putting plenty of pressure on that. It's not letting go. 
pull on that door handle, opens right up. Perfect. Now we can bring this over and we're going to try to line it up with its original position. You want to make sure you have all of the mounting holes lined up. Now I'm going to go ahead and hold onto the rod like this. We're going to take the inside door handle and hold it in the down position, just like this. We'll slide it on here. As it goes on, we're going to bring it right down and it should look like this by the time we get it latched in. There we are. Now we have this area right here that we want to pay attention to. So what I want to do is I'm just going to put it inside the door. Let's go ahead and get it lined up. Slide it in up against the door as far as possible and then lock it in. Give it a little wiggle to make sure it's semi-secured and then we'll continue on with each of our mounting screws. One of those mounting screws goes up inside the top corner here. We'll go ahead and put that in. I'm going to leave that loose until I continue on with the other one. Once they're both started, snug them up. Now I'm going to tuck this inside here. For good measure, I'll just go ahead and remove whatever foam's left on here. Now we can set this down into that position. At this point, we're getting ready to go ahead and put the door panel back on. But while we were removing it, I had mentioned that there are a whole bunch of push tabs that could potentially get stuck in the door or even fall out. Either way, if there's some inside the door, you need to use a trim tool and go ahead and remove them. Once you have all of them out, we'll go ahead and place them into the door panel before we install the door panel on the door. Once you have all of the push clips out of the door, continue on by inserting them into the door panel. Basically, you just slide them right in through the slot. This gray wire here with the gray connector is the one that goes up to the mirror switch. Let's take that and put it up and through that hole all the way up high. Now we'll continue on. As we bring this over, I'm going to take the other three connectors, the blue, gray, and green, and slide them up through the hole where the window switches need to be. Now as I bring this over closer to the door, I want you to pay attention to the area where my fingers are here. There's a lip. Now that lip actually needs to sit up and over the lip that's on the door right here. While we're talking about this area up along here, you also have your door lock. It's gonna be easiest to put your door panel on with the lock in the upright position or unlocked position. We're gonna to have to line that up with the corresponding hole on the door panel. I'll bring it up nice and high, line up that door lock, slide it through the hole. As I start bringing it down, I'm pressing this towards the door and I'm trying to line up the lip with the top lip of the door. Now once you have that lined up, we're going to continue on by trying to take a peek inside in between the door panel and the door itself. You want to find all those push pins and make sure they line up with the corresponding holes on the door. Once you feel as though you have them lined up, go ahead and press this right in so it's bottomed out against the door itself. Double check all the way around. If it feels like it's lifted away, more than likely one of those pins isn't lined up properly. You want to make sure you fix that. This feels fine. Let's continue on with the mirror switch. Have a look at the back side. You can see that you have this area that protrudes out a little bit. Looking at the wiring itself, you'll find the area that slides right into it. Line it up, latch it in. And for a click, I always give things a tug. Yep, that feels good. Now we're just going to go ahead and slide this in. There's two locking tabs, one along this area that goes along the side over here, and one up along the top. When I press, I always press along the base and never on the switch itself. Why break it?
Make sure it feels as though it's secure and it's not going to move around inside that door panel on you. Now it's time to reattach the window switch here. Now we're going to take this and we're going to start putting it in. You can see that I have a couple push tabs here that need to line up with their corresponding holes on the door itself. Make sure that's nice and secure. Now we can put this on here. Looking at the back, you can see that you have some locking tabs. Those are just gonna slide right in behind the panel as you press it in. We'll take this, we're gonna pull on that inside door handle, slide it right on through that square hole. We'll get it lined up with the area that it needs to be in and gently press it in. Let's put in our two mounting screws along here. Use my seven millimeter to get those in there. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now we'll use our five and a half millimeter to put in our lower mounting bolts. Time for our last plastic panel here. Looking at the back, you can find the locking tabs and the alignment tabs. Make sure everything lines up and carefully press it in.